So Tris, a little birdie told me that you gotta see Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl for a 30 minute preview session, is that right? Yep, just a little while back. Alright, so tell us what exactly did you get to see of the game in that time, or you know, how, what did they show you exactly? So the 30 minutes were mostly spent on the different features of the game that we had revealed to us in the last few trailers. So we got a better look at the Grand Underground, we got a look at the Super Contests, uh, making poffins, because that's like everyone's favorite thing in Gen 4. <laughs> um, the Amity Square, so you can like, walk around with your Pokemon, and then just general gameplay otherwise. But we didn't have that before, so I mean, this is nice, honestly. Yeah, this was our first real extended look at the game. So what was it like seeing it, you know, in this extended preview for the first time? So it's kind of funny because uh, with each trailer we've had for the game so far, you look at it and it's like, yep, they're definitely adapting uh, the Sinnoh region or Pokemon Gen 4 really nicely. But when then, then you actually get to see gameplay, not just a, a trailer for it. And it just brought me back, like those memories of like 15 years ago now, like I felt like I was jumping right back into it. And y you know the whole thing of like when you look at something from so long ago and in a remake, you're like, wow, this is what I imagined it looked like back then. Like you course, didn't yeah. realize what it looked like before. Yeah, that's how I felt with this. Um, it's such a faithful recreation of the art style into like a nice 3D setting that it, it really made me think like th this is what I imagined the game looking like back then. It just looked really nice. And obviously this change is on top of that that were apparent as we went through, but it really perfectly invokes the, the nostalgia of the old games. That's, yeah, that's awesome to hear. But I do know, you know, some people, when it comes to remakes, people are always going to be, you know, hypercritical or you know, right. hyper into it. Like, it feels like there's a little middle ground between the two. And the art style <laughs> in this case, you know, some people have had, have taken some issues with. But did you have any concerns yourself that were, um, that were assaged by seeing it in this extended preview now? I think the only real concern I has, well, I, I guess concerns if in, in quotes, because it wasn't really major concerns, but it come up in previous discussions we had done of wondering how faithful these remakes would be. Are they going to be like purely one-to-one, -one, or are they really right. going to go with quality of life updates to enhance the experience on top of recapturing the older experience? And we definitely got to see a good amount of quality of life updates to it, which made me feel pretty happy, honestly. Okay, great. So, um, so I guess what what feature excites you the most to revisit the game, or what? Tell me more about the features you saw that you're like, you know what? This is why I want to revisit this game. <laughs> like, is there is there anything it's fixing or addressing you remember having issues with it before, or something they're adding that you're particularly excited for? With Gen Four, there's 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 a lot that I really liked about it originally. But take for take for example the contests. Uh, I loved the contests back in the day, but they were like maybe ten minutes per session. Like they were a long mini game. Um, now it's a lot faster. I think it took about two minutes at most to run through the entire thing. It's completely changed because now it's basically just a rhythm game, but it <laughs> looks genuinely pretty fun. And I actually really excited to do that with friends. Um, that's one of the things I've been loving most about Pokemon games in recent years. Um, not just playing with friends and connecting with friends in general, but the different like mini games and different things you can do with friends, like the uh, like the raids in Sun, um, not Sun and Moon, in Sword and Shield, for example. Uh, I love the different connectivity you can have with friends, and the fact that you can do the contest with friends, and they're not terribly long anymore, uh, <laughs> is really enticing. Did you find out much more about the online, or anything that we didn't know about it before? Um, so it sounds like the online features are about the same as what they were for the original games back in the day on the DS, except obviously it runs a lot better. <laughs> Not No longer over Nintendo Wi-Fi connection. Um, I those days. <laughs> <laughs> there's some changes. So obviously you could still like play with other players or um, like battle them or trade Pokemon as usual. Uh, you can do contests together. Sadly, you cannot make poffins together anymore, um, which was just yeah. Like, it's, it's a little sad to hear after all your talk about <laughs> you know working with friends and everything, and now we find out a feature that was multiplayer originally, I believe, is yep. now single player only, right? Yeah. So originally, and I could be wrong on this, but originally you could connect with players, and it would it would let you make better poffins by essentially each player could put in more berries. Then, mm -hmm. so you'd get and you you just get something better out of doing it multiplayer. Now you can just do that on your own, so functionally it's the same, but the the teamwork aspect of it is gone, sadly. Um, so it's kind of simplified, yeah. it sounds like. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. It's it, it's a nice... It, to be fair, it's a quality of life improvement that's good because it means you don't need the multiplayer to get a good item, but it is sad that, that, con that the uh, connectivity behind that is gone. 
Right. <laughs> that makes sense. Well, speaking of connectivity in a way, in an in-game sense, mm -hmm. uh, I saw I saw that you can apparently access your PC from anywhere. Is is that a new feature to the game? Or So, uh, I don't remember which generation this was actually added in. It was 7 or 8, but um, in more recent Pokemon games, just when you open up the Pokemon menu, you can then access your PC with the press of like the R or Y button or something and easily kind of change up your party. But every time before that, you always had to go to the Pokemon Center or home or somewhere to the PC to then yeah, boot it right. up and move <laughs> everything around as you need to. And this was obviously one of the games originally that did that. But now you don't need to. So now you can just boot up the Pokemon menu, swap out your party as you need to. It makes it very, very easy for those, uh, for those who like to get shiny Pokemon by hatching eggs. And instead of having to run everywhere, they could just easily swap everything out. <laughs> yeah, so, so you're saying that appeals to you then, I'm guessing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so. Um, is there anything else, uh, any other uh, new key features you learned about uh, from, from seeing it? So I'll talk about the Grand Underground a bit, because that's that, that was a big thing that um, when we saw, and I think it was a couple trailers back now, where it's like, very similar, but also very changed from the original game, where functionally it's there, the same thing of you can go underground, you can connect with friends online, you can mine for materials, you can customize a secret base, but what they added now is there's these like hideaways where wild Pokemon can appear, and you actually see them in this overworld, more like the Let's Go games, or even Sword and Shield, and then you can interact with them and then battle those Pokemon. So it's, like, it's, it's definitely like a nice addition, and I believe it seems to add Pokemon you can't normally find across Sinnoh. Um, at the same time, they're, these are in like smaller like sections, so it's not the entire underground like this. So that is a major change to it. But we did learn that, um, I guess going back to the multiplayer connectivity, uh, you can still like play that with friends and visit your friends' bases, but the 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 mini game that came with that in the original games is gone. Uh, there was like a capture the flag you can do originally because you can customize your base and then you have to add a flag to it and you can make like puzzles and like a little maze through your base for other players to kind of uh, struggle to get the flag. But <laughs> the capture the flag is gone, sadly. That sounds epic. They cut out <laughs> the most epic sounding feature where you can make your own like capture the flag mazes and stuff. Yeah, it's 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 a little upsetting, unfortunately. I forget how you can stop the other players um like i because i know if you're playing at the same time because if you had them as friends you can kind of visit their den whenever mm -hmm. but if you were playing at the same time you can stop each other from stealing the flags but i don't remember how exactly that worked unfortunately but now that's just Maybe gone that's you, you can still visit <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you can still visit the dens but i think you can only really put like statues in there now and mm. the, the, you can't really put like all these different decorations to make it your own other than pokemon statues so it sounds like, minus the capture the flag loss, uh, this is overall a, a an improvement to how it works. Yeah, because in the original games, unless you were explicitly playing with friends, there was no real incentive to go to the underground. But now there's a lot more because you can use it to try to get special Pokemon or different types of Pokemon that you're looking for. You can customize the base to, um, to increase the chances of certain types appearing in the hideaways. So you can really, like set your playing field basically and run to the underground as as you want to and use it to catch even more pokemon or get special items with the mining minigame which is it looks pretty much identical and i'm excited about that because i really like that <laughs> mining minigame <laughs> <laughs> uh speaking of the pokemon themselves is there uh, is there anything different about the combat this time or the capturing or anything involving you know the pokemon themselves that stood out to you from uh, the extended play session or uh watching session i guess <laughs> this is over a zoom meeting so yeah viewing session um yeah. it seems pretty identical to what uh, we've come to expect from um the more recent pokemon games the ui actually looks like a perfect upgrade of the original games so it actually helps invoke that nostalgia feeling uh because it, it looks like the classic ui but kind of updated to a modern look and it still has like the, the clean, uh, accessible features of the more modern games. So like, uh, if you register a Pokemon in your Pokedex and then you go to fight the same kind of Pokemon again, you'll see from your moves what's effective against it, which is just a nice, helpful feature. Got it, okay. 
And uh, the original game didn't have an experience share, right? Or did it? I think the original game had a specific item that you can put onto a Pokemon, and that one Pokemon will gain some extra experience. I remember that, right. But now it's the whole case of, like, more recent games. You, uh, when you turn on the experience share, your whole party will get some, uh, some percentage of the, or some portion of the EXP. The, the one that was in battle get the most. But thankfully, I think they, they said you can turn that off or on, so. Okay. Uh, do you know anything? Uh, are there any changes or additions to the story? Do you know at all? or? So when we asked about the story, they very specifically told us that this is a faithful recreation of the Diamond and Pearl games, but they mm -hmm. can't tell us any more than that. <laughs> Interesting. So maybe faithful with additions? <laughs> yeah, like it makes me feel like I, I can't tell if they're just not saying it because yeah, exactly. it, it's a case of, well, there's a bunch of new people about to experience mm -hmm. this game, or if that means there's actually changes. <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't, yes, yeah, just to be clear, I would not read too much in that statement because Nintendo, like, hides things when there's nothing to hide. So <laughs> who knows what that means in this case. Um, so I guess for you, in an overall sense, Tris, how was it like, you know, revisiting this, you know, revisiting it in a, you know, having watched it, I guess. Are you more excited now to revisit it? Was there anything else that surprised you about it? And yeah, how excited are you to kind of get to, to go hands on with it yourself at this point? I'm definitely a lot more excited now that I've got to see it myself more than I was before. Because at this point, um, up until this point rather, um, most of my focus was put into Pokemon Legends, like all the coverage we were doing and all that, so I didn't get too much of a chance to really uh, explore what's going on with the Diamond and Pearl remakes until this, and then looking back at all the trailers and such for it. and. I'm just really excited for this, because I loved these games growing up. These were the games that got me, like, super into Pokemon. Like, I had already been playing the earlier gens before this, but I don't know what it was about Diamond and Pearl, but those were the ones that, like, really hooked me in, and I put, like, several hundred hours into them growing up. <laughs> um, so it's it's definitely an exciting feeling knowing that these are about a month away now. Yeah, November uh, 19th, so not far away at all. Yeah, there's so many games recently, and this yeah. is two, basically. <laughs> basically two games on November 19th. Um, is there, I guess, is there anything, uh, any final things you want to leave our audience with, Tris, before we fully wrap it up here about this game? Anything else that stood out to you or any other final thoughts? Uh, I addressed this in our uh, six details we learned, but uh, learning that Amity Square specifically restricts you to cute Pokemon was really <laughs> funny. And when I was narrating that video, my husband jumped up and goes, how can you do that? Who is to judge what is a cute Pokemon or not? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's what was really funny about it. I just had to make sure that got said because that, that had me cracking up in the middle of my recording. <laughs> That's pretty funny. That's pretty great. Um, so is that everything, Ventress? Is that everything you have to share with us from your uh, 30 minutes of, uh, of watch viewing time with this game? <laughs> Yeah, I think so, because they mostly showed us things that we had already seen from the trailers we had up until this point. And I'm sure there's plenty other new things to look into, but this preview event was ma mainly meant to give us a look at, uh, or rather an in-game look at what we've already had advertised to us in trailers. And I gotta say I'm really excited for it. Now that I've actually got to see a lot more, I'm really excited to come back to this gen and the Sinnoh region in general and see uh, what has and hasn't changed in the 15 years. Oh, real quick, actually, uh, to that point, how ha how did the music sound um, in the 15 years <laughs> since you heard the last? It honestly sounds really nice. Um, I don't know if every single song in the game is remixed, obviously, because we haven't heard enough to know that. But everything we have heard does sound really nice. And I'm looking forward to seeing how, uh, like, Cynthia's theme, the champion's theme, is completely mm -hmm. redone. Because that's become, like, a Pokemon classic. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's in Smash Brothers currently? Yep. Yep. Okay, well, there we go. <laughs> that sells that. <laughs> Obviously a classic. All right, everyone, that is our preview of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. So, Tris, thank you for sharing your thoughts about the game uh, about the game so far as we approach this November 19th release date. Again, not that far away. Um, if you want even more details about the game, make sure to check out our six details about Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl in case we didn't cover all of it here. And uh, hopefully we'll find out more about this as we approach, again, its release date. So thank you for watching. Click that subscribe button and ring that bell if you haven't already. And stay tuned to Game of Play for more on these games and everything else Nintendo Switch. We'll catch you later. Bye, everyone.